Hello everyone, my name is Martin. I'll be guiding you through this short video today. In this video, we will be taking the Azure functions uh, from inside Azure. The code from that one will place that into an Azure DevOps repository. We'll use an Azure DevOps pipeline to deploy the code back into Azure function. The benefit of, it, of this is that you get source control on your Azure functions. You'll be able to see the tracking uh, on what has been changed now and in the future as well. And also, you'll be making your Azure function read only in the portal. So no one will be able to go in there and do changes without you actually knowing it uh, from the deployment. So let's get into it. And let's start with creating a Azure function in the portal. So I'm inside my, uh, my research group for the Azure function. I'll hit create. I'll search for function and select the function app. I'll hit create. I provide a name. Let's call it Cloud Ninja function app. Seems to be OK. I choose to use the um, PowerShell runtime, so the PowerShell core, and place it in the West Europe region. I already have storage account for functions, so I'll select that one. I'll base it on the consumption uh, model, so I, I don't have to pay anything on it unless I'm actually using it. So skipping through to the uh, monitoring, I'll disable the application insights for this one since it's a demo. Normally in production, you would always have this uh, online, so enabled so you can see what's going on with the function. I just hit create to I should deploy the function into my environment. This will take a minute or two to complete. And while that is running, we can actually do some work in our Azure DevOps. So if we switch to the Azure DevOps portal, you can see here that I have a project for this block. I'm going down to my repositories. And I have a repository initialized, but there's no files in it. Well, let's clone this one down to my local machine so I can start working with it there as well. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I can just hit the button for, for Visual Studio cloning. I'm going to select a location for this repository. And then finally hit open when it's cloned down. So we have it here. And we should also be able to see it in here. So we have it. Let's see if our deployment is done, and it is. So let's go to the resource. We are under our new function app. Let's go down to functions, and then hit create to create a new function. We'll choose to develop in portal, so we have the scenario we're actually already having something in Azure, and we want to get that on source control. I'll select the HTTP trigger and just call it demo, hit create. So this creation is fairly quick. It will be done quite fast, and it will automatically open my new function. There we go. If I go down to code and test, I'm able to go into the portal here and just delete some text and put some new stuff in. So I can put in, this is developed in the Azure portal. I can hit save. I can then do a test run. Just change the name in here as well. And then hit run. And there we go. The function is running. So now I want to get this code on a source control. And the way I do this is going back to the function app, going to the overview pane, and I can then download the app content from this function. I'll leave it on the site content, put a mark and include the settings as well, and then hit download. It's a very small file, so it's very fast. Just hit open here, and then I can copy the files I have. I can go to my new repository, just create a single folder here called Azure function, 
and put in the code. So normally I would have a structure here doing a, the artifacts, locations, and so on. But for basically the the basic up the setup of the, the code, let's just do it like this. If I now open the Visual Studio Code, I can see I have my code in here. We can see the changes I've made in the portal are here as well. So let's stage these changes and put them online on the, to Azure DevOps as well. So I can do first push of code, commit the change, and then do a push. If I go back to Azure DevOps and have a look at my repository, we can see my files are in here now. And I can just copy the folder name from here. So I now have all my files in here and I want to start the deployment from Azure DevOps into the, uh, the Azure portal or into the Azure infrastructure. So the way I do this is create a Azure DevOps pipeline. And for that, I need the folder name so I know what I'm actually putting in there. So I'm creating a new pipeline. I'm choosing a Azure repo git and choosing the repository I already have. You can see it actually recognizes it, that it's a function app, but just to clarify a bit more, I'm going to do a startup pipeline. I'm going to, going to delete the first two steps in here. So this is just for demo purposes. I'm going to delete that. Then I'm going to use the assistant over here. So I'm going to need to zip all my files. As you saw when downloading from the portal uh, with the function inside, it was a zip file. And it's the same thing we need to do when we upload a new file. So we need the, all the content zipped and then upload it into Azure. So I'm choosing the archive files um, action here on the old task. I oh, would be pasting in the folder that I just had. As for the location in here, I usually have another uh, variable in here. You can find all the predefined variables in this documentation site from Microsoft. I'll link that in the description for the video as well. But I'll be using the system default working directory. So I'm going to copy that one over, pasting it in here. I'm going to remove the, uh, the mark here for the root folder. So I don't want anything else in here. And the last thing I'm going to do is copy the path here. So we're going to zip the files and we're going to put it in this file. And since we're going to upload the file in the next step, we might as well copy the path from here. So I'm going to click add to add the step. So now this files are zipped and it's ready for deployment. And as you saw before, Azure DevOps has an integration or a helper function to, to create the actual output process. So if I search for function, I can choose Azure functions in here. I have to select my subscription or my service connection. I already have that in, in my environment. So if you haven't set up a service connection, you need to do that first. Microsoft has some good documentation on how to do that, otherwise, please reach out to me. So I'm selecting mine. I'm selecting which app type it is. So in my case, it's a function app on Windows. And then, uh, then I can just search for the one I need. So Cloud Cleaning Function App is the one we just created. So I'm selecting that one. The last step here is the package folder we want to deploy. And since we have an output from the previous step, we can just paste that, that in as the input for this step. And then hit Add again. That's all we have to do to create a pipeline to deploy Azure Functions into Azure. So I'm going to hit Save and Run. I'm going to call it First Deployment as my commit. And hit Save and Run again. So the first time you deploy the function with the, with the pipeline, it takes about a minute or a minute and a half uh, just to be able to push it up. We can open up the status here see that the job is actually gone into the queue and in just a minute it will be starting to, to be visible as well so you see it initializing the job and receiving all the files so while that is deploying uh, we can go back to visual studio because we just created the pipeline that's actually a new file that would be in our repository as well so pulling that down ensuring that my local repository is up to date is always a good idea I'm just going to do a pull. 
if we look at my files, we can see the new file is in here. So that's all good. We can see here on the status page that we have been using uh, the packets for the new settings. So that's already gone into source control. It's now deploying the zip file as well into our function. So if we just take a short look at the actual function in here, it won't be ready yet, but it will already be recognizing that we are starting to deploy from the pipeline instead. So in just a bit, that will be shown in the top here that we are now in the read-only setup and we can't do any more edits inside the portal. There we go. So we can see here that the Azure portal has changed it, this into a read-only because it's been deployed from the package file now. Let's see here. We can see it did successfully deploy. So now it's just running the last few items. While it's running, we can go into the file itself. We can again go down to code and test. And we can see again, we are in read-only mode. So if you try to type, it will say, can I it? It's in read-only mode. So that's all good. This is exactly what we want. And if the deployment is done over here as well, and it is, it's all good. So that's all good and well, we can now deploy it from the pipeline, but the main reason is that we want to be able to do the development inside our Visual Studio code or normal Visual Studio. So let's do a change in here to the code. So it will be developed in Visual Studio code and deployed with Azure Pipeline. Let's put in DevOps pipelines. Let's hit save for this. Go back into our source control, stage the changes, and just say updated message. Commit the change, do the push. And the second time around, it's actually pretty fast to do the, the, the run of the pipeline. So it will show up here in just a second. We can see now that it's here. Again, it's the exact same task that it will, that will be running. So the archive file is already done. It's deploying a new. We can see now that the app set and service settings is already present, so we don't need to upload, update those. But the packets will be deployed again. If we have a look the last time, it took two minutes and 55 seconds to complete, actually. That's a bit longer than normal, but that's how it is. And the second time, 30 seconds. So it's already up to date. So if we go into the portal for the last time and just have a look at what's in there now, we can do a refresh. And when the refresh is done, we will be able to see the new text in, in the bottom here. So it's updated. You have a new, do a new test run. Same parameters as the last time. Hit run. It's now using the new version of my app. So I hope this small video has been helpful and you can now get all your Azure functions on the source control. You'll be able to collaborate with others a lot easier now. And you will have that safe. you have always being able to go back to see what has been changed if something is all of a sudden broken in your app. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you again. Bye bye.